In this video, we're going to look at how to sketch the basic graphs of the sine function, cosine function, and tangent function. When you first learned about the trigonometric function, you would have learned that by using a circle to define sine, cos, and tan, sine theta is defined as y on r, cos theta is x on r, and tan theta is y on x. R is the radius of the circle and x, y are the coordinates of the points on the circle corresponding to the angle theta. In the case where we have a unit circle where the radius r is equal to 1, these identities simplify to sine theta is equal to y, the y coordinate of the point, cos theta is x, the x coordinate of the point, and tan theta is y on x. So if we would like to sketch the graph y is equal to sine theta, what we have to do is we need to track the change in the y value as the angle theta moves through the circle. For example, at this point, theta is equal to 0 degree. Our y coordinate is 0. And this is going to correspond to this point on the graph. As we move in a positive direction, which is anti-clockwise for theta, going from 0 degree to 90 degree, the y coordinate changes from 0 to 1. So the graph is going to move all the way to 1. There's going to be a bit of a curve because it's not exactly linear. Then as we continue to go from 90 degree to theta is equal to 180 degree, the y coordinate goes from 1 back down to 0. And then as we continue going from 180 degrees to 270 degree, the y coordinate goes from 0 to negative 1. And as we continue going back up to 360 degree, which is the same point as 0 degree, the y coordinate goes from minus 1 to 0. And we can keep on continuing, and that's why we get a cyclical pattern for the sine graph. The next one is a graph of y is equal to cos theta. This time we're going to track the x coordinate as the angle theta rotates through the circle. Starting off with this point, which is theta is equal to 0 degree, the x coordinate is 1. As theta moves from 0 degree to 90 degree, the x coordinate goes from 1 to 0. As we continue going from 90 degrees to 180 degrees, the x coordinate now changes from 0 to negative 1. Going from 180 degrees to 270 degrees, the x coordinate now goes from negative 1 back to 0. And as we continue to complete the cycle from 270 to 360 degree, the x coordinate goes from 0 back to 1. And again, we can keep on repeating this pattern. And this is the graph of y is equal to cos theta. For y is equal to tan theta, we're going to need to look at the ratio of the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. At this point, when theta is equal to 0 degree, y divided by x is 0 divided by 1, which is equal to 0, and that's going to be this point on the graph. When theta is equal to 90 degree, y divided by x is 1 divided by 0, but because we can't divide by 0, the function is going to be undefined at 90 degree, and we're going to have a vertical asymptote. If theta is slightly less than 90 degree, we're going to be in Q1. And so x and y will be both positive, but 1 divided by a very, very small number, it's going to be approaching infinity. However, from the positive side. If we are close to 90 degree, but a little bit more than 90, so we're going to be in Q2. Here, x will be negative, y will be positive, so the function will be approaching negative infinity. When we get to theta is equal to 180 degree, y divided by x is equal to 0 divided by negative 1, which is 0, so the function goes back to 0. When we go to 
theta is equal to 270 degree, y divided by x is going to be equal to minus 1 divided by 0, which is again undefined. So we're going to get another asymptote at 270 degree. So let's consider if we're a little bit less than 270 degree, our x is negative, our y is negative, so the ratio will be positive. So we're going to be approaching positive infinity. If we are a little bit more than 270 degree, our point will be in Q4, quadrant 4. Here, our x is positive, but y is negative. So the ratio will be negative. So the function will be approaching negative infinity. And as we get back up to theta is equal to 360 degree, everything will repeat itself again. And this is a graph of y is equal to tan theta. Thanks everyone for watching the video. In our next video, we're going to look at how to transform these basic trigonometric graphs. We'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.